sun is shining, birds are chirping, the beach is calling, and the last thing you want to do is actual work. So I'm here to give you some tips and tricks on how you can up your productivity levels in the summer. Number one, set clear goals and objectives. One of the main things that will help you focus is to set clear goals as to what tasks you want to accomplish. Rather than trying to get everything done at the same time, or multitasking, kind of like having a coffee and trying to balance on a balance board at the same time, it just ends up being a big mess. So here's what you have to do. Step one, write down all of your tasks, everything that comes to mind. Step two, sort them according to priority. Step three, break each of those down into smaller actionable items. Step four, assign time for each of those steps. That way you'll know exactly what your next task is at any given time, your bigger goals will feel achievable, and you'll just end up having a better time. Two, switch up your workplace. If your work can be done remotely and your company approves of it, take this chance to explore some new workspaces. Because when the weather's lovely, even the nicest office can feel oppressive. So experiment with working outside. Soak up that vitamin D but do remember to put on sunscreen. Just whatever it is, make sure that your setup doesn't create any tech-related headaches. Double check that the internet is good and that you have all of the necessary equipment so that you can do your job best. If working from home isn't an option, how about changing up your space within the office itself? If you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting where computers aren't necessary, how about turning it into a walking meeting? Fresh air and a new environment gets those creative juices flowing and the more relaxed atmosphere might lead to better, more in-depth conversations. Number three, shorten your work week, if you can. It's a well-known and proven fact that no one can stay 100% productive throughout all of the 40 hours of a traditional work week. If you add summer distractions to that, then productivity risks slipping even further. Like your mom sending their vacation pics, your BFF saying, come out and hang out with me on the terrace, or you see volleyballers in the distance having a good time, it's just a bit depressing. So staying at work just for the sake of it isn't going to lead to the best results. So if you can shorten your work week, that's definitely the option to go for. At desk time, the company policy is that during the summer months, you can cut down your Fridays by two hours, provided you've completed all of your tasks. This is great motivation to finish your tasks up earlier so that you can get started and have a longer weekend. So send your mom a photo from the beach, have a happy hour with your friend, grab a nice lunch with your bestie. If you're your own boss or if your company supports this, how about taking the entire day off? Trying out a four day work week is one of the hottest trends right now. But don't go overboard. Everyone has to come back to the office at some point. I'm talking to you, Philip. Pull yourself together. Number four, prioritize your calendar. Meetings have been shown to be among the main time sucks in a workplace. So next time you're planning a meeting, take a long, hard look at it. Maybe it can be an email. If a meeting is inevitable, think about what would be the best time to schedule it for. A lot of people are most productive in the mornings. So if that meeting involves some serious decisions, consider having it in the morning. Meanwhile, if it's more of a brainstorm, then you might leave that to the afternoon when people's serious thinking is depleted and then can just jump around with some fun ideas. You can also try to implement meeting-free days. So for example, on Wednesdays, you schedule no meetings at all and dedicate that day just to deep work. Number five, set an optimal temperature. Fights over the office thermostat have been going on forever. Because let's be honest, it's really difficult to get anything done when you're dripping with sweat. Experts say that the ideal temperature for an office is between 21 and 24 degrees, but this can vary from person to person. What you can try to do is try to make sure that there's an AC or a fan close to you that you can regulate based on your own needs. Now, if ACs aren't an option at all, you can also opt for a refreshing cold beverage. Number six, update your office routine. If you feel like you're getting into a rut, consider switching up your morning or evening routines. If your commute allows it, try trying a new route to the office. Or if you always drive by car, consider biking or walking. You're taking public transit for a change of pace. You can also experiment with switching up your lunch times or any other routines that have become part of your day to any mundane degree. So switch things up and see what happens. If nothing else, you'll learn what not to do. 
Number seven, take time off to disconnect from work. Make sure that it really is time off. To do that successfully, do all of the prep work necessary, like divvying up your responsibilities around with your teammates, setting up your out of office automatic emails, all of that stuff. That way you'll have the peace of mind knowing that while you're on vacation, things won't be falling apart at the office. When that's done, close your laptop, turn off your work phone, snooze your LinkedIn account, throw out your keys, put on your swimsuit, and au revoir. And number eight, track your productivity. What's a productivity video without a little bit of shameless self-promotion, isn't it? You can use a tool like this time to track your productivity throughout the day, the week, the summer, so that you can do all of the planning that I was talking about earlier in this video. With desk time stats, you'll be able to track your productivity, see when you're more productive in the morning and the evening, see what distracts you most, what kind of social media, and in general, make better decisions about how you want to spend your work days. Because when you know better, you do better. Yes, that is an Oprah quote, I think. Those are my eight tips to stay productive during the summer. We hope you found them useful. If you have any tips of your own, please comment them below, subscribe to this channel, and see you in the next video. Bye.